and I'll never back down In the middle of the ring is where I lay the smack down Against all odds I will always prevail The way you step to me is like hell in the cell Greetings and salutations, this is Christopher Daniels. I'm talking to my main man Delzinski right now. Any video game show, any video game channel, any YouTube channel called Vintage Shizzle is indeed hashtag Daniels approved. Yo, alright guys, Delzinski here and welcome to another We Talk Wednesday. And as per usual, I am joined by the self-proclaimed professor himself, Weet. How you doing mate? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Self-proclaimed. I'm. I, I swear you gave me this nickname. There's right. no way I call myself the professor. Not the amount of stuff I get wrong. Yeah, but you're like Mike Tanay's biggest fan. <laughs> well, yeah. If I could look like him, that is that is the dream. Kind of do. Kind of do. <laughs> He's just. I'm. A, I'm an older, bolder version, aren't I? Slightly grayer version. Whoa! Now we're getting spiteful. There's no need to go there. <laughs> so, how you doing? Everything going good with you today? I am well, mate. We are we are back on track this week, WWE wise. Even though we still don't have the bloody network, mm. um, but yeah, it's gone from a uh, bloody awful to um, well, not so awful this week. Yeah, well, you were saying before we came on, it was bloody good. Well, so this I is... don't I, I don't want to get too excited. They let me down far too much. Yeah, this is a huge turnaround for you. You're actually looking at the positives for once. No way. That does not sound like me whatsoever, does it? <laughs> Not at all. So so this week we're going to be looking at, well, actually first we're going to be talking about our visit to 2K because I've made a few videos on it um, talking about the My Career Mode that myself and Weeds got to test play. But me and Weeds are going to have a chat about that because Weeds did get hands on with the game as well. He wasn't very good at it. But don't How many worry times did you beat me? Can't talk about that. <laughs> it's one of the things that is uh, is not allowed to be released. Um, and so we're going to talk about the My Career Mode. Shh, very quiet. Um, and then we're going to talk about Raw. We're going to have a quick roundup of that. And then we're going to do almost a quick fire predictions of the matches that are at WWE Hell in the Cell 2014. And then we've got one other thing. Uh, we're actually going to a wrestling event as well um, on Friday, uh, a UK event. And we'll talk about that as well at the end of the show. So, yeah, a jam-packed We Talk, to say the least. And uh, let's kick it off. Let's talk about WWE 2K15, my career mode. Got some new screenshots for you guys as well. Yes, plenty of NXT goodness. And, uh, yeah, what did you think, Weeds? Because I've talked about it a lot recently. I think I'm going to hand it over to you to give your views on the my career mode. Oh, it was great, and I'm sure that the guys can already see from um, some of the shots. You've got the, the the face text really coming through. There was quite a bit of emphasis on on that in the day, um, and yeah, the the career mode. It's uh, it's an interesting start, isn't it, for WWE in in terms of uh, what they're trying to do with 2K. Um, it has taken on a bit of that NBA um, career mode in so much that you earn experience points. Uh, you're you're leveling up your 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 CAW as it as it was and um actually taking them through an active um a whole active campaign which uh goes on as we were kind of trying to find out for an undetermined uh, amount of time but all the way from kind of the development section through nxt into raw and smackdown and ultimately into the hall of fame but what we saw we we really liked didn't we it was a lot uh, the pace of the game was significantly different wouldn't you say from last year yeah, I, I've mentioned it before. I'm sure it's, you've covered that already. It's much slower, um, but I mean, when you say slow, people always think, oh, that means it's not any good. You're not going at full speed, but wrestling games shouldn't have to go at full speed. The spam punching is no longer there anymore, and it's more slow paced, just like a wrestling match is, and the pace builds throughout, and I think that's very nice, um, and you will be allowed to create some really good matches with the pacing that they've got, and obviously that new lockup system that we got to test, um, which I was a pro at, I have to admit. <laughs> that's so much bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the, the new lockup system was interesting. Um, we were debating when you kept losing it whether or not we could turn it off, which you you can, can't you? You can. Um, but yeah, it's uh, when we say, I suppose, just to clarify, when we were saying slow, or I was saying slow, I suppose what we probably term it better is smooth. Um, yeah. 
there was no juddering and I'm, I'm sure we were playing an early build of the game um, still. So I think, I'm sure, knowing 2K, they've probably got a few uh, surprises up their sleeve for when the, when the, the game gets released, what, in uh, just over a week now and uh, we're on P- uh, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Um, so, yeah, I reckon they've, they've still got a couple of aces up their sleeve, potentially what we're going to see with that game as well. But so far, what we saw in the day looked really good. Yeah, um, to go back what you said about the actual the pace of the game, um, I think what was nice as well is the the additions of the crawling animations that you've got, where you can now crawl, um, you can regain your um, your actual stamina by staying down on the mat. That's all a lot more realistic than what we've had before, where they would just bounce back up and they'd kind of stand just groggy. Um, yeah, I, I think there was additions that 2k have made which were almost like fine-tuning to what thq maybe started with their wwe you know 12 13 and then we moved into 2k 14 but this is beginning now to start having that feel like an nba game where they look at the element of realism and bringing that into play so it's been it's been really good and i think it is going to be one of the best wwe games that we're going to get um it's got a big I would probably say everybody kind of thinks that SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain, I think it was, was the best WWE game. So it's got something like that to compete with. Um, Whether or not the My Career Mode is going to be great enough yet, but I think the foundation has been put down, like I said in my previous video, for them to really take this career mode and keep on working on it. And 2K16, 2K17, start introducing, you know, face scans like they've done in the NBA franchise for yourself to put yourself in the game. Um, it looks really bright. The future looks amazing for WWE games. No, and we even had um, quite an interesting moment during one of the games where we did um, a ladder match, didn't we? Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, with, um, with the crawl, the guy who was on the floor actually moved the ladder, knocked it over on, on the way. So it was that was quite an interesting little bit as well. Just as uh, we had someone marching up to go and take the briefcase down, he actually found that he was nowhere bloody near it by the end of it. And he was lying on his back looking up at the lights. Yeah, it it was it was really good the matches that we played, um, albeit that you did actually win most of them. <laughs> With cheap cheap roll ups. <laughs> yeah. I will become a pro at this game just like I have in previous WWE games. If you've played me online or you've played me on YouTube, you'll know that I'm speaking a hundred percent the truth. Uh but you know, I will I will <laughs> what what? What was that? Oh, God. Yeah, it was I just, think I had what, what was it, two and oh? Come on, come on. 21 and 0, 21 and 1. Cut. Look, what was it? What was the first match that you beat me with? Was it like, um, was it Headlock? It was an epic. It was an epic tussle that went back and forth throughout. We had many finishing moves displayed, and I think I beat you with a body slam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, <laughs> because, because the pinning system in the game is very quick. So I was talking about the, the pace being slow, but that, that, that bar, if you are in um, serious damaged health, um, which I was obviously, I was sort of kicked out, uh, but I was obviously very badly beaten down um, somehow by hook or crook. Um, and yeah, the, the, the actual bar when you try and kick out that pinning system, whew, that took me by surprise for the first time. So obviously I was learning the ropes. And then, but it was then, quite interesting. Yeah. Some of the other aspects, I'm sure you, you've mentioned it already, but particularly when you when you make the moves and you actually see your percentage going up. Yes, it was good. Which was, uh, which was very interesting. We were kind of debating whether or not it made a difference, for, you know, in, in depending on what the certain character's overall was and if you leveled up quickly, if you're going against someone who's far more lower than your overall. Um, so, again... We got we got to see snippets because we were only there for a couple of hours, really, weren't we? So, mm-hmm. but it was good. We we liked what we saw. We did, we did, and like you said, that whole um, element with the the power. I think you spotted that if you was. Uh, I think we was having uh, a match with uh, who was it? Was it? Um, I can't remember which superstar I was using, but the, he was an a upper, more stronger character and his punches would take a lot more damage off of you as opposed to maybe a high flyer. 
And um, yeah. that was kind of the best bit about it is that it's been more realistic to those superstars. So if you're the big show, your punch is going to be considerably more than, um, I don't know, it's just an Adrian Neville. Just- so, yeah. You get to see where you know where you've allocated those hit points. I would imagine whenever you've made one, and where they actually go, and you can actually see the difference. I would imagine between the characters now as well. Exactly, exactly. It's a lot more visible. Yeah, and I, I mean, um, you touched on it at the start of this we talk. I mean, the look, the literal hashtag feel it. You really can. Um, the the new screenshots that we've got with Adrian Neville. Um, it just looks phenomenal the nxt arena looks great um it just looks so great to have nxt in it yeah i mean there was a lot of people that were saying oh you'll never get nxt guys because they're signed to these developmental contracts um uh completely not true because we've got them so there you go so interesting i mean the amount of attention to detail where they've gone into the character models is just phenomenal. And the amount of work and effort from the team, from 2K, you know, even going out into the middle of nowhere, uh, you know, just go and get Shawn Michaels uh, scan done correctly. I mean, he hasn't been... When was the last time he was an active member of the roster? Exactly. I mean, he retired, what was it, 25? <laughs> you know, it's been a long time since this guy's been off TV. And that attention to detail to make sure they got it right, and that's what 2K have always, you know, stuck their name on is getting the attention to detail right. And, um, yeah, I'm fully expecting, I'm expecting this to probably be the, the the greatest WWE game there has been so far, albeit you, here comes the pain is always that benchmark. I don't know if that's just because of the roster. Um, but, yeah, I'm expecting it to be well up there. Exactly. I think that was, that was a great story that um, Bryce from... Uh... 2k told us about Shawn michaels and you know they traveled um you know around the states trying to get all these face scans i mean they were setting up that face scan technology everywhere they went it's quite a lot of kit that they had to set up Shawn michaels lives in the middle of nowhere he doesn't even have any phone reception have to go and travel out to him um yeah i mean it must have been quite an experience i mean i would have thought it'd have been an amazing experience traveling around trying to catch up with these guys but um also as well quite a lot of hard work because you've got a lot of uh a lot of superstars with a lot of attitude there um randy orton you'll cover that probably in a bit but um you know he did not have a strop on war all this week <laughs> no but i mean it just it must it must have been so much fun trying to catch up with these guys and just uh like like he said when he gave us his um presentation bryce was you know just have them pull faces because that's all they were doing, sitting there pulling different emotions, different expressions, and you get that all in 2K15. Uh, I think Corey Graves is another one that we got screenshots of today. The tattoos on the guy are just amazing. Bray Wyatt yeah, is, again, the same. The attention to detail is just phenomenal, and uh, I think even, even on the uh, the playthrough we were... Both stood there for about two minutes just looking at Batista's back. Batista, <laughs> oh! forgot about him how awesome did batista look he was one of my favorites i think even said when we were sitting there talking about it um i thought batista looked immense ah totally and uh, that that was it we literally we paused the game and we're like um and we were just trying to (laughs) just have a good look and the detail they'd gone into for batista particularly his back his his entrance you know everything everything is it was good last year and it's just polished everything this is i think what we said about this time last year is that Give them a year, 18 months, and they will have a, a polished game. And at the moment, that looks like exactly what we're going to get. And I must say, even though the my career uh, aspect and, and the next-gen um, exclusivity that it's got, it looks like it's going to be well worth it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's definitely well worth it. I mean, it's if um, I, I know this isn't great news for the, the PS3 guys, but... Um, the, the difference between the two, you can clearly tell that the, the focus was on the PS4 version, the next-gen version, which which does make sense, we've got to be honest. And to be honest, they were quite open about that there as well, weren't they? Yeah, he, he, um, Bryce actually said it was all about next-gen this year. So, I mean, I think they were giving uh, the PS3 version um, a bit of a nod that the PS3 is still about, but for them, they have moved on to the ps4 and that will probably be their focus moving forward i wouldn't expect uh, another wwe game on the ps3 i don't think 
Oh, I don't know. I think if it's anything like the FIFA series or anything like that, you're going to keep getting them out. You just don't. I think, like like you were saying, I just don't think they're going to get the amount of attention. But I suppose as long as they're making sales, and we do know the uh, WWE <laughs> does like to make money, um, uh-huh. um, I think we, we'll probably still see them on the um, the last generation consoles probably for a few more years. But you never know with WWE, do you? They, I mean, they even had Foley turn up on this this week on Raw and not not actually quote nine ninety nine to anyone. So that left me open mouth. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I'll just say one more thing on 2K15 is I will be getting both copies anyway. So I'll be getting the PS3 version and the PS4 version. So I can do a bit of a comparison and it will be interesting. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting to see if the PS3 version is a step up from 2K14 or is it just a bit of an expansion from 2K14. So, yeah, I... I'm really looking forward to getting both versions of the game, to be honest, just because I want to play them and do some comparisons. And there's going to be loads of stuff to do. So, yeah, keep an eye on the channel for for more interesting stuff. But overall, we had a really great day. Even Weeds bought me an apple juice. So I was very, very uh, (laughs) chuffed with that. Um, Let it go. Let it go. It's been a week. (laughs) Do you want to tell them what you did at the uh, the test play? Well, I I had to go and get you a drink obviously because you were so engrossed in the game and so much so you, i don't even know if you were aware i was there half the time um so i said i'll go and get a couple of drinks from the bar um came back and said oh all they've got is apple juice Delzinski. i'm i'm sure you'll be okay with that didn't even lift his head up from his game set and the screen and went cheers mate sat down took a massive gulp and promptly discovered it was a heineken but yeah, he um, after he'd swallowed it <laughs> with uh, with some difficulty, he recovered his composure and uh, lost to me. Two K fifteen. Ah, that's a ridiculous story. Let it go. <laughs> go on then. Go on then. Tell us about Raw. Well, Raw was good because it was the bar i'm going to be completely honest because obviously we did not do one of these last week uh, due to existing commitments that we both had um it couldn't get any worse than it was the week before <laughs> could it really well no <laughs> to be honest it was all over the place a huge mess and uh, it this, just felt this like this is 2 weeks ago isn't it two yes weeks 2 weeks ago it felt a bit like it was um the authority just just making decisions left right. It, it, do you know what? It, it it felt like a Monday Nitro, but a poor man's Monday Nitro because you just didn't know what was going on, and it just wasn't very entertaining. So, albeit that they were trying to, you know, make some surprises, do, it just, do something a little bit different. Yeah, it just just poor I old Cena in that ring <laughs> did not have a clue what was going on he was like what the hell are these gonna guy are these guys gonna do next though what we both probably agreed to is that probably over the last week or so um Vinnie Mac probably fired a few rockets up people's asses left right and center because what we got this week was a far better roar wouldn't you say yeah definitely and I think I think maybe just maybe it had to have uh, a really shoddy roar like we had a couple of weeks ago to uh, to get that kick up the ass because um it, yeah I, there was a lot of people complaining about that monday night roar and yeah. uh, maybe that was seen from social media you know the wwe loved their social media and uh, maybe it, it didn't did. two mondays ago <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i was going to say it was uh, yeah it was it was it, i'm not saying it was a perfect roar or anywhere anywhere near the stretch of the imagination but compared to what they put on the week before it could have been a 10 <laughs> so yeah to kick it off i suppose uh we got a lot of ambrose we got a lot of Rollins. we got a lot of um randy orton and they were the three main ones we really got a lot of this week not so much cena cena was there but a bit more in the background than he has been previously yes um the gumph and i'm do apologize for anyone that likes these wrestlers and watches them regularly, but a lot of the gump or happened earlier on in the show. So we regularly talk about there's a dead um, last, you know, from about an hour, from about an hour and a half in to two and a half, that hour between an hour and a half to two and a half hours in, you normally get a few weird matches that don't quite flow right. The pacing for me really worked well this week. 
Um, and, I, and saying gump, I suppose, is, is, is a bit derogatory to some of the people who were on earlier, such as Seamus. Um, so, yeah, it was good to see Seamus. They used the Divas a lot less this week. We still did get a couple of matches, obviously. Um, like what they were doing with Paige, how they built that out with um, Alicia Fox and AJ and going into that angle. So that's it's come away from being as weird as it was to a bit, a bit more normal. And they actually did the fake out thing this week, which was good. We still got uh, a bit of brie on on there, so that's that's fine. But a lot of the, the 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 solid wrestling stuff they 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 left towards the end. And to be honest, the street fight where we all knew the cage was coming down was you know it was great. Some of the bumps that were taken in that match were quite good. Um, and my favourite one, obviously, did involve uh, Randy Orton losing his temper somewhat and yelling um, an expletive. Um, when he tried to catch, um, I think it was Seth that came over the top um, <clears throat> and basically nearly impaled himself on a table. And to be honest, that table took a right hiding after he nearly did that. Um, but no, they built some they built some good stuff. Obviously, Rollins and uh, Orton, I wasn't expecting to get the kind of little bit of a payoff that we got with the, the curb stomp at the end on Orton. Um but no, those those two were right at the top of their their game. Um, Ambrose was doing his normal crazy stuff. Um, bit of hit and miss in the middle, I suppose, with some of the promo he was mm. trying to do with the dummy. Um, yeah. didn't, it didn't quite work for me, to be completely honest. Um, but like The Rock did a couple of um, weeks ago, good old um, Mick Foley um, came out and saved the day. So yeah, it was um it was an interesting one. It always helps when you got a legend like Mick Foley on there, and he he managed to put that match over a bit more um, by obviously going over the, the the King of the Ring, Hell of a Cell from '98 um, for about the 455th time. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that Mick was uh, associated with um, Jeff Jarrett's Global Force Wrestling these days. So maybe just maybe he's now. Back with the WWE, he seems to he seems to chop and change quite a lot, old Mick. I mean, one minute he was in Impact, next minute he was in WWE. No, I, are you saying he's a sellout? Uh, he sells out arenas when he. Oh, goes. he's stealing my life. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Um, yeah, I, Raw was good. Um, Randy Orton for me is the most interesting bit on Raw at the moment, not just because he's uh, getting annoyed with tables and whatnot, um, but you know. Orton for me and a lot of people I think you may be falling a bit more of a side that you're sometimes a bit bored of Orton sometimes but not I, when he's like this <laughs> yeah I, I I like Orton's character I don't think it is boring I just think that they 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 don't utilize him um enough and I think what's happened with Orton is very interesting um you've seen the vines yeah you've seen the vines yeah, yeah. I, I mean this this is something probably that WWE have picked up on as well those vines have gone viral yeah they're just they're just everywhere you, you cannot walk around a corner without fearing that you're going to be RKO'd by Randall Keith Orton I mean that is how big that's got and I think that maybe they're also jumping on that bandwagon a little bit by beginning to put that push forward with Orton because he's already in the social media aspect at the moment massively so what better way to put him over than start pushing him into a main event picture with Brock Lesnar and I think with Cena, something that I thought was interesting about Raw was trying to almost turn him face um, by obviously hitting an RKO on um, uh, Paul Heyman. On um, everyone. <laughs> yeah, on everyone. Um, before the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, where you would expect that WWE would usually like to go into this pay-per-view with a crystal clear, clean-cut Cena face versus a heel in Randy Orton, which seems to be flipped on its head now because I expect that Randy Orton will get cheered at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. It was interesting. Uh, again, I think it was all going so well until he started yelling out fuck um <laughs> repeatedly after legend in, in, when he impa nearly impaled himself on a table um but it's it's been interesting the whole angle has been interesting you know why did seth turn around to triple h and say you know you should make the cena um orton match um the winner faces brock lesnar i'm assuming everyone thinks we're getting a, a, a cash in uh shortly yeah. thereafter um and you know when's that match going to happen because you know if they're saying i mean hopefully we're going to get it at survivor series which would be which would be great um but yeah i would like to see orton 
back in 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 kind of face mode because I don't he's never really like full complete heel unless you are obviously from Kansas City and <laughs> are supporting the Royals in the World Series but um no he's he's kind of the he's he's like the ultimate in between guy I suppose is that he's you know the the assumption that he, he has been the chosen one outside Cena. He does have the skill set that is you know not really anyone can can match what he can do. And but slowly but surely, I think we both said they've been building him up. And you know he's the guy that's having the great matches, um, the ones that people are talking about with Jericho, with Ziggler. You know he's hitting this RKO so many different ways at the moment. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's, it is is ridiculous, and again, the one on Ambrose on Raw, it was just it's just it's it's just out of nowhere. It's smooth. It looks brilliant, um, and yeah, maybe we're getting a a renaissance of the uh, the Legend Killer before, obviously, uh, as Paul Heyman says, whoever goes forward is going to get completely destroyed by uh, Brock. Well, just remember, or, or uh, Seth said that probably. Yes, yeah, Seth said that. Oh, you were going to get corrected there, I reckon. But yeah, you know, I've slapped my own hand. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, the one thing I'd say about Orton, um, particularly, is if you do remember back when he had his feud with Triple H, um, I mean, he was actually amazing as a face at that time. The way he went about it with Evolution, and uh, I thought that was obviously the best we've ever seen from around Orton, and. If you think well, I used now, to like it when he punted people in the head. That was my oh, favorite. so you liked him when he was doing the punt. Okay. Well, I mean, if you think about that, let's merge those two personas together, yeah? And let's take that forward to face someone like a Brock Lesnar. If he has that attitude, but he also has that will and passion like he had against Triple H to win matches, and they go with that, I mean, imagine that feud. That could be really good. And then the ultimate payoff, I think, is obviously trying to get Orton to win the title so then Seth can cash in and take it off Orton. Because I think they think he's a weak link and that they can pick him off and they compare his title reigns to others where, you know, he was a bit of a coward with his title reign. Um, You know, it's ideal for the authority. Um, Where does Triple H stand in this? Hmm? Well, he's going to, he's going to have to come down on um, Seth's side, isn't he? Surely, you know, well, unless Seth, you know, it it will be, be that was what was interesting. That was what was interesting is that Seth kind of broke the authority on a Monday night by that curb stomp at the end. But he's done that a couple of times now. He's done it with Lesnar. I mean, it was like, and Heyman said, you know, mm. gave him that warning, you know, uh, he will remember if you do anything like that again. Um, next really? time it won't be. It won't, <laughs> well, no, probably <laughs> probably not. I mean, I, I don't think he even remembers he needs to come back to Raw. But uh, apparently... <laughs> like January before we see him. <laughs> apparently he's scheduled to start coming to Raws again. I mean, he, he needs a paycheck or something like that. But yeah, Lesnar is going to be coming to Raws soon. That just sounds weird. Your WWE champion doesn't attend every Raw, but there you go. Um, but yeah, Orton, I mean, it just seems like they're going to try and do that degrading like they did with him when he was champion. You remember how badly they treated him? It was like, oh, you you know, they, they really did make him out to be a coward of a champion. I think it'll be the same thing now. It'd be like, you know, you've let us down, Randy. You, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, you know, you should be looking at Seth and how Seth's done things. And I'm assuming that possibly, and um, we'll probably talk about some predictions that maybe that, we could get a Rollins win, and uh, if that's the case, then it could be that comparison. I certainly freaking hope that Cena doesn't win, actually, in the cell, because I was maybe indicating that Cena could win, so Orton would be said he's a, he's a massive letdown. No, 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 no. Well, it'll be interesting, again, when we come on to it, what match you think will go on last? Uh, is there any question? Well, what, which one? Will it be will Ambrose it be? Rollins has to be the main event <clears throat> to 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 give any credibility to the young talent? I don't think it will be, but that's just wrong. <laughs> I think it will be Lesnar. Uh, Lesnar. Lesnar. I'm talking bollocks. Um, I think <laughs> it, I think it will be Orton Cena uh, just because of the stipulation that was added on on Monday and the importance that that match that match got so much more importance on Monday night. Really? At the end of the day, it, you know, it's like. 
Dean Ambrose went up too early in the raffle, took his prize, and there was a far better one waiting late, later along the line. And that's that's ultimately what Orton and Cena are going to do. So I think that just because of who they are, what they've meant mm. to the company for the last few years, I, I see them going on last. I will, I will say that that Raw segment with Ambrose, with the doll, was not very good. Um, I, I It was all right. It was all right. I'm not going to say it was rubbish, but See, um, I this was, is what I've been talking but about. You, what, yeah, Rose. what you said, what, what you said, and I think someone maybe picked up on this a couple of weeks ago was that he's got a crazy persona. You know, um, yes, he's got there's a crazy a persona, crazy and stupid. <laughs> yeah, and there's a difference between you know him being out and out crazy and like he was doing, um, you know, attacking uh, Seth Rollins week on week, which was crazy because he just didn't care. To just bringing out a doll and slapping it about a bit. I mean, you've been watching the evil. Uh, what is it? The um, see no evil two. Did you with the section where he's in a, eating popcorn, watching Kane's movie? That was his version of of being a lunatic, scouting the opposition. Um, and yeah, not to not to harp on, but it just. I don't think it's doing him any favours. I was waiting for uh, Chucky to pop up on the uh, on the Titantron screen and uh, Titantron. I'm so retro. Uh, I was wait- <laughs> I was waiting for him to pop up and ask. Uh, do you remember that in WCW when Chucky <laughs> came up on the uh, video wall? Remember that? Remember? I do remember that. I mean, who was he feuding with? Uh, Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner versus his twin. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous uh but yeah I, cleavage th- that, that's it that that's a good that's a point that's that's like a you know there's there's just the, sometimes the outright ridiculous did it need him to have a doll to slap about but could he have not just brought out a kendo stick or a chair and said look these are the you know we've got a hell in the cell match but i'm gonna bring in the weapons i'm gonna do this that that's more credible for an well, ambrose why is he keep why do you have to drill I, I, I don't know. He's going to do some he, DIY, he, take down the ring? I don't know. He's going to put a shelf up. Uh, yeah. You know? Why? why? He's, he's gone from, as I said, it's cinder block. And this isn't just this isn't just handy me. Andy. <laughs> and this isn't just me having a go at Ambrose. Because this is, as I've said before, this is WWE in a whole. And I think I just used Ambrose as an example of this, where you've got cinder block, green mist, impaling doll with screwdriver and threatening to drill your opponent. And that's that's yeah. There's the lunatic fringe, and there's a, there's a there's a part where you know it just doesn't make sense for me. And I think he made they made the the the, the connection, or Ambrose made the connection during the segment with Foley this week, where he was like basically saying we're alike. Um, but the one thing you always get from from Foley is yeah, he could do some crazy shit but he always had that one specific goal and i know that i know people are going to say it's it's rollins but you know it it always foley always managed to bring it back and you know it would be a bit silly but then suddenly it would get very very dark very very quickly with what he was talking about and don't get that so much with ambrose as i said i'm not knocking it it's only it's only small things uh with ambrose but having a segment like that where he's not for me um, ready to do that kind of stuff's not. It's, it just it did. It, it didn't work. And again, I'm not having a pop at Anne Bros. It just for me this week that that segment was a bit weird. I think I think what you're saying there's quite true because uh, when you look at you do a comparison with uh, uh, mankind, um, yeah. you get that you got that feeling that you know okay you would do some stupid stuff and there uh, but it, it was always quite over dramatic but but it, yeah. but it but it, it had it, it had to be like that and then it would go down that darker route there was nothing dark about what he did with that doll he didn't it didn't it, it didn't shock comedy. anyone there was no shock value and that that's the difference of the wwe's writing from attitude era with a mankind and a mick foley to uh, uh dean ambrose in the current day um they would rather go down the route of him slapping around a doll than maybe saying something rather cutting and maybe doing something a little bit sadistic with something I mean, else or bringing out someone else. I remember they used to do things that sometimes I didn't even like these things when they would, you know, go and bring someone else out and then put that person through the punishment that they feel they were going to inflict on the superstar at the next event. Something like that. But they won't go down that route because <laughs> they can't touch those sort of areas anymore. If well, you know that's why I mean. it was so weird this week because you've obviously got... Um, 
Ambrose sticking a screwdriver right into somebody's skull. He's ripping off people's arms, albeit a dummy, but it's just like this is this is where I go back to the WWE and like we were saying, their identity is that I assume this was all meant to be slapstick comedy, but with a very dark undertone, obviously, because it's Ambrose. But at the end of the day, you know, the lines were just cringeworthy with saying, I saw you the other day, and then he brings out a saw. I want to hammer my point home. Um, you know, nobody, no one's calling you a dummy, Seth. It was like, oh, it was just like, oh, man, this is, this is too Mick Foley. <laughs> don't you think don't you think something would have been better maybe just to have had a match and punished someone and mm. and and gone back to that sort of shield persona that he had where you know he was aggressive in the shield um he wasn't he was nuts but he wasn't he wasn't you know doing silly stuff like he did this week on raw and and yeah that that's it they're pushing it again they're doing what they do always do they always push mm. it to the extreme to a point where it's being rammed down your throat and it's always unnecessary from the WWE's point of view, but they always have to do this. We should be used to it by now. But that's it. I mean, we used to have the three faces of Foley, obviously, with Dude Love, Mankind, and Cactus Jack. And and that that's the problem is, is we're getting the same sort of thing from Ambrose, but we've only got one Ambrose. Um, mm. And you, you just, it, it lacks credibility. If you want me to get behind him as a main event, player not to steal any Stephanie McMahon um lines it just doesn't work for me you know if you're trying to do that and have all the comedy he can't be everything he's either a, a complete lunatic and you know lunatics aren't I would imagine overly concerned about comedic em- elements that they're trying to portray um and I just don't I'm just not buying the unhinged um because it just all looks so false um, I, I just want him to be a brawler. I just want him to be a brawler like he, <clears> like he has been and and have that element of uh, the unpredictable, which means he can rock up or turn up anywhere and and you know like 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 you say like just just you know when he wipes people out like going over the table into the announce team and that sort of stuff that's for me it. that's the insane stuff that he should be doing and and you know taking <clears> you know taking a ridiculous bump off of the hell in the cell would be something for me that would show he's a lunatic, you know. They're the sort of things that would get him over, not the promos that he done this week on Raw. So I mean, yeah, it's no, it's no dig towards Ambrose at all. It's a dig towards the the WWE writing team that you know there are better ways to get someone over as a lunatic than just to make them look kind of silly. Yeah, I mean, you could have, they, and again, if they're willing to do this kind of angle where you've got people being stabbed with screwdrivers, why not kidnap Stephanie McMahon or something along those lines, or you know, something, something a little bit, <clears throat> and marry her to Fandango. <laughs> now, see, that is proper lunatic, and I could get on board with that. <laughs> but yeah, it's just yeah, it's too many. They're trying to do too many things with him when like, like you say, it just needs to, if you guys go in one direction, this is what we're going to do. And again, I'm not talking about one direction before you start. I, I wasn't going to say, I was just going to say, why is he not <laughs> taking the briefcase yet? <clears throat> well, he took it. He filled it up with green shit and fucked off. But why, yeah, but why is he just not keeping the briefcase? That's a whole good little uh, f- story in itself that he won't give him back his briefcase. I mean, they're the sort of things to me. And when's he going to get a new briefcase as well? That's How, taking a when, battering when that, that case. <laughs> when that briefcase gets cashed in, <clears throat> what on earth is it going to look like? It won't even have any sort of uh, <laughs> look or feel of a briefcase. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's got a few clanks on it so yeah he's had it quite a while though so hopefully survivor series um we'll get a cash in soon i hope so um i hope it doesn't fail and and not not at some point that that briefcase has to be put on the line between him and ambrose i think well i I think that's what everyone was expecting it's got to be this weekend and that would have been great if you had one Helen in a Cell for the WWE Championship uh, number one contender and the other Helen in a Cell for the briefcase. You know, that's that's how I would have booked Helen in a Cell if I wouldn't have gone down. I've always said the six man route that I wanted to go down with Lesnar. <clears throat> but, yeah, I think um, they might have missed a trick with that one. Do you think that they <clears throat> will go on top of the hell in the cell? Uh, yeah, out of sheer principle, those two will be on top of the cell. Do you think someone will go off? Uh, considering they brought back Mick Foley, maybe they're indicating that they're going to take a risk and have yes. a ridiculous bump in this match, and Ambrose would be the sort of guy to take that bump. 
I think it'll be Seth. Do you? Yeah, I think you're going to get all the authority out there um, and they will cushion his, his land. If anything I've seen from Seth Rollins in the last year He's not is that he does he does like a crazy bump <laughs> every now and then. Yeah, so yeah. I, he looks Maybe t- they both do one. Oh, I would. I would like to see someone go through an announce table off of the cell. I've, I love that. That is just epic. I mean, when when mankind did it, Mick Foley. Uh, when Shawn Michaels did it, when he, I think it was Undertaker at Bad Blood, stamped on his fingers, and then he yeah, just he sort cheated. of sort of dropped. It just looked good, Doge. And 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 uh, this is off subject now, but this was awesome. That chair shot that the Undertaker did to Shawn Michaels at Bad Blood in the Hell in the Cell is the best chair shot ever. Just the way Shawn just lays like an X in the middle of the ring. It's just, <laughs> it's game over. It's game yeah. over. Off subject, but I love it. Yeah, I mean... The, Bring back the, Shawn Michaels. The, the fact they got two Hell in a Cell matches should be enough for this pay-per-view to be a, quite solid. Yeah, it should be, it should be a good one. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, <clears throat> and I, I like, as I say, the only thing I might disagree with you on is that I would very much expect to see that that is the main event because I think it's going to have a better match mm. to it, to be honest. But but like you've said now, the... the, 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 the uh, I don't know what I'm saying there. The defining, <laughs> yeah, the the, the, the <clears throat> defining match of this pay per view has now become Randy Orton versus John Cena because of the stipulation. Because, like you said, they didn't decide to put the briefcase on the line. The other one's just a grudge match. I was going to say. So, with that in mind, then should we have a quick run through? Go on in. You 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 uh you uh you hit <clears throat> me with the with the matches, and we'll we'll go through them. We obviously we want to we want to cover a couple of these probably in a bit more detail. But um, so let's kick off with an absolute slobber knocker. Her uh, Brie versus Nikki Bella. What do you reckon? <clears throat> uh, Nikki, Bell- me. N- Nikki Bella. You're going to hit me with a Nikki Bella. Yeah, I reckon Nikki Bella too. So let's m- move on as quickly as possible away <laughs> from that. Gold Dust and Stardust versus the Ooh. So, uh, Gold Dust and Stardust is too early for them to lose the titles. Yeah, I agree with you as well. We're being well boring on this so far. All right, then AJ Lee versus Paige. What is this round 55? Which way is this one going? AJ Lee. Ooh, I'm going to go Paige. No, they can't drop the belt again. Yes, they can. That thing's like a bloody yo yo. Hot potato, hot potato. <laughs> okay, next uh, Big Show versus Rusev. Oh my God, is there any question of a doubt that the big show is not going to be my pick? This is ridiculous, Rusev. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree. Do you see anything happening at the end of this match at all? Fuck all. <laughs> well, it's obvious. Who's he? Isn't it? Who, we... who's he? <laughs> <laughs> He's coming in as a new fresh superstar to feud with Rusev after this. I mean... I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming fuck all is not a face. No, of course he's a heel, isn't he? <laughs> um, no, this is so obvious because uh, I don't see a lot coming out of this. Um, oh, big show, why? I mean, the only thing that he's ever had is that bloody punch now, which is illegal anyway. You're not allowed to do a, 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 a proper punch like that. That knockout punch is illegal. It's going to have to do what? It's going to have to be a slap, isn't it? I, I, I would slap. like to see Lana slap him one. That would be quite good. <laughs> Right, next up, um, Fella versus the awesome one. Who are you going for? I'm going Fella, but obviously we missed out the most crucial part of Raw this week was that Mizdow got an awesome roll up on Seamus. <laughs> <laughs> Which the Miz obviously claimed as his own victory. Um the Miz and uh, Damien Sandow, they are too funny at the moment. And I'm hoping we're going to actually lead on to some kind of Seamus um, and we'll come on to who we hopefully be going on against later. But I want to get into this Miz kind of Sandow feud sooner rather than later. I don't see that lasting too much longer. Don't you really want um, Sandow to pick up the belt at some point? Just just any belt. Diva's championship would suit me fine. <laughs> I, I, I just love Sandow so much. We talked about this before. Just, he's so awesome. Why? So underutilised for such a great uh, great character that can talk do, so well. He does everything. He's a good wrestler as well. Do you worry that he's filling the void that is Santino Morella? 
No, not necessarily, because if you gave him an Intercontinental Championship, I actually do think he could make that belt credible because he has such a huge persona. All you've got to do is get away a little bit from that losing streak that he's had over like... He won't? No, I know, but he's he's not exactly got a very good track record, has he? So... um, Obviously, he won a six-man tag team match where the tag team champions were, of course, in a six-man six man tag team match again on Raw. I, I just, yeah, I, I think he, I think he has the tools to still. Uh, if you gave him an Intercontinental Championship, United States Championship, he could carry that belt and he could do a lot with it. And I reckon he'd get a lot more. Um, I reckon he'd get a lot more interest than, unfortunately, like a Sheamus because guys like Sheamus, um, um, Ziggler's maybe getting a bit better but like guys like um Seamus just don't they, they they're hard working they're hard hitting but just don't really get over as much as like a character a big personality like a uh, like a Sander what's amazing about Seamus by the way is that he has got a huge personality I've watched him as just being himself and he's awesome I was wondering awesome. where you were going there for a minute <laughs> uh what I wasn't well. talking about his great white all right you know <laughs> No, no weeds. No, no. Oh. This is a PG show, weeds. It's brilliant. And when Sandow dressed up as Seamus last week, oh, that was too funny with the white tights. <laughs> Wetting myself. It was so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I'll probably, I'll probably agree with you on this one. We'll both go fella. Mm. Just, just probably, most likely. So, an interesting match now. We've got the two out of three falls match for the Intercontinental Championship out of Ziggler and Cesaro. And obviously, Cesaro's coming off the non-title win on Monday night. Where do you see this one going? I don't really care what happens as long as Cesaro wins the belt. When is he going to win a belt? You can't just say that every pay-per-view we predict. Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> he has to win the belt. Oh, come on. Just let him have it. It's come so on, un- man. Yeah. I'm so Every time we talk about a pay-per-view and do a review, it's always Cesaro. I say Cesaro, and he don't freaking win. If I say he's not going to win it, then he probably will. But I'm still saying Cesaro. Cesaro, 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 Cesaro. It's only it's only two falls. He's only got to win twice. Cesaro, <laughs> king of swing, getting the win. And hopefully we can obviously get him in that, and then we can get hopefully going into the next pay per view survival series some tradition. Tra- tra- I can't talk some four and four matches in <laughs> at that event where we can actually build some people properly. But yeah, I completely agree. Cesaro for me as well. So well, that leaves us. I think just to add, just to add. Just don't want to dis- discredit Ziggler at all. Um, I still think Ziggler should play a part in the Intercontinental Championship area and not not be brushed aside because that's what they're used to doing with Ziggler. But it's just for me, it's about time that Cesaro got this belt because he lost all momentum. Getting Heyman, rah, annoying. Um, time to re-establish it, get it working again, and then let Cesaro you know, build that division. And I think like we could say Ziggler's the guy to build that division, but Cesaro really is um I mean his his move sets innovative. I mean it's just something about Cesaro I think can 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 get that division back to what it should be. It's the as I think we said before, it's the US title and the Intercontinental title. And it will be very interesting where they go. And I think we're both kind of expecting this is the next step for Rusev. Um but it would be good that we actually merge those at some point because, to be honest, at that level, they don't have enough people to be involved with those two titles. And it's just it it detracts from what they're trying to do with them a lot of the time. But I suppose the only reluctance to that is that there's no WWE championship being defended week in, week out now, is there? Would Would you begrudge if, let's say, Cesaro picks up the belt, that Sheamus and Cesaro go at it again? Because I really wouldn't because I thought their matches <laughs> were great. No, it kind of felt like we got a couple from them and then they went, do you know what? This is actually quite good. Um, let's save this <laughs> yeah. and, and we'll have it take place for when it actually means something. And that's kind of what I took from their feud the first time round. Exactly. And that's what I think. I think that possibly this, that, that could have that clash of belts and um, those two would be a good guys to do it. 
So that moves us on nicely, doesn't it, to the, um, as Triple H said, the co-main events. Because obviously not one's mm. going to take precedence over one over the other because Triple H said that so, and he doesn't lie, even though it took him eight months to turn up with a unified WWE championship. Not that I hold any grudges. Um, so obviously the, 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 the first um, main event, which will be on before, is um, Rollins versus <laughs> <Pedro>. <laughs> Wow, wow, wait a minute. Did you win with your decision, not mine? Yeah, well, you know, Cena rules, isn't it? Edit. If it, it's Cena's house, he gets to go on when he likes. Who does the edit in here? Oh, it's me, isn't it? I'll switch these around before we go. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. It probably will be this way. Uh, am I predicting already? Or you want to cover? You want to say anything else before we... Well, we've predict? covered quite a lot of it already. I suppose, what What are you looking to happen in this match? What What for you puts this over? Do other people get involved? Uh, No. I don't want I don't want a fudgy ending. I don't want a dodgy ending. I don't want any it's, sort of It needs to be ending. definitive, doesn't it? I want it? I want so. it to be one of those ones where you have those bumps like you had with um a Mick Foley and Undertaker. Um I want it to be like that. I want to see someone come off the cell but yet still um get up. I mean when I played um I've done a simulation of this match and me and my brother did it and something that came out of it was that when when uh, I'll give away the bloody ending now, but when when <laughs> when when Dean Ambrose uh, took a bump off the cell, which you'll see in that video, um, we were we were talking and we were like playing it through, and we were like, well, what would Dean Ambrose do if he could get back up? Well, I personally believe he would just climb straight back up that cell and try and get Seth Rollins once more, and that is what I would expect to happen in this: that he will keep getting up. And he will keep getting knocked back down and he won't stop until he physically can't get up. And either that's got to happen and Seth Rollins wins because he just can't get up anymore. He's been off the cell twice, three times. I don't know. Um, or or, or it's, it's that he's such a lunatic that he comes out with something on the night that Seth Rollins cannot cope with, which could be some, again, ridiculous bump off the cell. So you're going... I don't no. know. I didn't actually tell you, did I? No. You're <laughs> um, quite ambiguous. It's I'm, like you're trying to get an answer out of me first. I'm probably going to go with a, a, a Rollins win because I, I, I would like to play this scenario out that um, uh, Ambrose will keep coming at you uh, until he's actually completely taken out. And I still think then it builds onwards to a match where they have the briefcases. And I wouldn't even mind if, if Ambrose took the briefcase off him, but then Rollins wins it back at some point. Uh, so you're going Rollins? Yeah. Right. I think in my heart, I want Rollins to win. I think, oh, I think nice. that makes more sense, obviously, if we are building towards Rollins trying to um, get involved in whatever Cena slash Orton, better be bloody Orton, um, Brock Lesnar event that happens at some point down the line. I think that's the only reason we don't have the briefcase on the line for this match is that Ambrose is going across in this one. I see Ambrose winning this one, and that is why we don't have the briefcase. So I think he will throw everything he's got at Seth in that place. I want Seth to win, but I think it will be Ambrose. Mm, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So the proper main event. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> My main man. How many times has this been a main event? <laughs> what, this year or? <laughs> Just, oh, yeah, go on. So, Mr. Cena no. versus, versus Randall Keith Orton. Is it really worth asking me this question, who I'm going to say is going to win this match? Well, yes. <laughs> Obviously, the master of the RKO, Randall Keith Orton. I'm inclined to agree. Now, there's a lot of people saying, and there's a lot of uh, indications being that Cena will actually win this match. No, if Cena no. wins this match, is that enough for us? Do we do we say we give up? Are we no longer watching WWE? If Cena, should we go and find something else better to do with our time? <laughs> if Cena wins this match, right? How? on earth does that do anything for the wwe another match with brock lesnar right yeah yeah why if you're gonna go down that route why don't you just have the flipping rematch again at the hell in the cell pay-per-view this sunday 
Do you mean the match that should have happened at this pay per view that they yeah. conned us all out of by getting everyone to sign up to the network for another six months? Yeah, if you're if you're thinking you're going to put that match on again, when let's be honest, we all expected it would be at Hell in a Cell. It's not, so we've all got over that now. We, we, we were looking forward to John Cena getting massacred in a cell. Yeah, uh, but but we've we've we, you know we've rolled with a punch. We've we've moved on <laughs> now. We've decided that it's fine, and Randy Orton will be the man to take it to uh, to the Beast. And I actually am much more interested and entertained by seeing Randy Orton feud with Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. I think it's as long as they don't be a bitch to Orton and they let Orton be you know um, in your face. Um, and still have that heelish element about him um, that's a great feud coming up and do not there is no need I don't know what we're going to do with John Cena we need to get like one of those you know you get those toy machines where it has the little crane and it comes down it picks him up and then just sort of removes him from everything and I thought you were going to say like crash him or something with could, it could do that as well it's just it, we, yeah what are we going to do with John Cena coming out of this I don't know and that's my biggest worry is if there is nothing for John Cena what does that mean? It means that he's not going to lose. So that, that yeah. What do Shit. you think? <laughs> what do you think of, we go into Survivor Series, we have Mr. Orton, Mr. Lesnar, one-on-one. Um, Orton, it's looking a bit precarious. Rollins comes in, decides he's cashing in. What would you do if John Cena came down and got involved? Shit. Apart from smash your TV in, of course. I... I <laughs> that's his next feud. I think is is going to be Cena versus Rollins. Yeah, but no one wants to watch that. No, yeah, but that's you the problem. Ask, got, you could where ask else any do you fan. put Cena other than Rusev? And do you want to do that to someone you've spent the best part of a year building up? I've told you what to do with Cena. Write him off for a little while. Send him on some sort of promotional stuff to like Kazakhstan or something. Can I Just, ask you a question? What do you play the lottery? No. <laughs> any form of lottery. In this country, the world, US, anywhere at all, do you play the lottery? Why? Why? Because you you've got a better chance of winning that than you have of John Cena oh. being written off TV. Look, what are you... <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. No, there's no there's no place for him at the moment. There's no everything's quite good at the moment. The, re, the, re, <laughs> the reason why it becomes not very good is because John Cena's involved in it. Everybody knows this. Everybody can do this. I mean, uh, we've had Tom Kushney. I mean, turn heel over this. Uh, <laughs> not, 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 not just for the fact this that he had, serious. Not just for the fact that he had problems with his channel. He went heel because he was so angry that John Cena. Um, you know, he's hanging around that main event picture. I'm sure of it. I'm, I'm sure of it. I mean, he's like, even grown a beard and everything. It's amazing. Like, hey, that is epic entrance of the year. That yeah, movie. yeah. You know, don't, I, look, got to, got to shout this video out. I mean, um, as you know, Tom was away for a little while. Um, Tom, shout out to you. Um, but uh, yeah, he's back. And he's back. Um, he's beast in, mode. He's, yeah, he's back and he's a beast um, with a beard. Beard. Do I Go, Tom. Beard, goatee. Goatee. Is that goatee it's like, it's or like goatee? A, it's like a. It's oh, like, I like how you did that. There's a t shirt there. He's like, he's like a, he's like a mini Joel Gertner. So he's <laughs> like, it's like a mini Joel Gertner. Just needs the, uh, the neck brace. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Only joking. Only joking. His, his video is very, very good. Go over and check it out. I'll, I'll link it. I'll link it. I'll leave a link in the description box below. You can head over there and check out, uh, Tom making his emphatic comeback to YouTube. It was awesome. It, it is laugh. awesome. Um, so what are we talking about? I, all I can think about is Tom and his beard now. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Cena. C Cena. Yeah. C C so you pick Cena. No, right. no. <laughs> uh Cena, Cena's gotta gotta be removed somehow but that is like like you kind of almost pointed out to me now um that's the worrying bit there is nowhere for Cena to go if he loses um, it has and been for a while nine times out of ten when that is the uh the issue Cena wins so uh I hope not because what what does this mean for Randy Orton he goes back into no man's land because he's not a face or a heel anymore he's just ugh and whatever they do with Cena, oh, please don't make Bray Wyatt. All these magnificent promos they've had and vignettes don't have him feuding with Cena again because if it is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm handing in my wrestling badge. I'm not watching it anymore. Oh, dear. I will, I will have a proper strop. 
Yeah, I, I can't see that happening. I think I think they know they've damaged Bray enough. That's why they've 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 done this. I mean, at first, reset. I, at first, I was a bit worried about all this, like you know, letting go of um, Rowan and Harper. But I'm beginning to sort of realise that this wasn't this wasn't to put over those two guys. This was this was to make Bray Wyatt as a singles competitor become more, you know, focused, more relevant. Yeah, yeah. And, so, that, and, and that's it. It's done every, all three of them a great big favour by having this little break. Because you know, as I said, I was getting bored of it. Pretty, pretty. And to confident. go back to these proper vignettes, and it's got a very um, for anyone that's watched True Detective, it's got a real big ring of True Detective about it, and the actual kind of killer that they were trying to find in that series. So no, it's absolutely fantastic what they've done with Bray Wyatt and these. And I've really, really enjoyed these. It's gone back to the old school, hasn't it? These mm. vignettes we've been getting. I'm pre- I'm pretty confident if he needs to call upon Rowan and Harper, they will come and help him at some point. So I do imagine that the paths will cross, and I don't think it will be against each other. I think it will be, um, you know, if he needs them, they'll yeah. come. So so yeah, and I like that. I like that idea that there's that that oh. you know that that respect. There's another angle. Could they involve a, inv- you know, invade? Could, could they involve a, a cell in any way? No. There you've got more chance of Sting coming down from the rafters. Do, 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 do. I'm going off on a tangent. Um, so go on then, who do you think is going to win? RKO for the finish. Ah, well done. We've only disagreed with the Divas Championship match, I think. Uh, That's only because of my love of Paige, of course. Yes, he didn't agree on the Cesaro one, did we? Oh no, yeah, we, we did, we did, we did. Unless you pick Ziggler. No, no. No. <laughs> um, ah, it's pretty good, pretty that good. That means, right, if you are thinking of placing bets on these, I really wouldn't do that based on anything that we have said today. Of course, go go bet your house on it. Don't, <laughs> don't do that, seriously don't. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, that there are predictions. Let us know yours in the comments box below. Um, it'd be great if you can just list the matches and say your winners and losers. That'd be fantastic. It'd be great to hear them, and we'll obviously interact with you guys and let you know what we think. Um, I want to get your views as well, obviously on WWE 2K15. I, I've answered quite a lot of questions on my other video. I'll link that in the description box below. Um, but guys, yeah, weeds can get involved as well and answer a few questions if you can be asked. Um, so yeah, I mean, that'd be great. Um, um, obviously let us know what you think of Raw do you agree on our views uh, in terms of Ambrose and uh, controversial yes well yeah but I think I think I think we kind of put the point across it's not about Ambrose it's about WWE's writing um, and yeah I actually have got if I can find it one second uh, do some filling weeds what do, 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 do. are you scanning through emails to try and find the guy that you forgot is this like when we went over roman numerals earlier and i had to explain what the, the v actually meant you didn't have to explain <laughs> what the v actually meant the v is a five <laughs> yes well you know now don't you well i i knew that before <laughs> we came on but what i said was this is linked to where we're going at the end of the week because oh, yeah. we've got a couple of wrestling events coming up, haven't we? So we've got a very UK-based one, which is literally up, literally up the road from you. Yes, right. Um, I can go so to the you, pub all day, and then you I was going to say you can crawl home, can't you? Yes, I can. So yeah, we're going to FPW this Friday um, for I think it's Trick or Treat Four. That's four Delzinski, not six, as as you were trying to tell me with your deciphering of Roman numerals earlier. Um, so that should be good. I mean, on there, we're going to actually go and see uh, Daniels and, and Kazarian. So we can properly, officially have the photo and the T-shirt to say we are Daniels approved. Yes. Um, also going to have Chavo Guerrero on the card, aren't they? Chris Masters and Hardcore Holly. So, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to that one in uh, Carl Shulton on, um, on Friday night. If you don't know who Carl Shulton is, Google it. And then, yeah, coming nor, up... Nor did he until about five minutes ago. <laughs> Not until about an hour ago. Um, and next week, we are seeing WWE again, aren't we? Up yes. at Wembley Arena. So we're looking forward to that too. And from what I hear, it's going to be Cena versus um, Rollins in a street fight. So, yeah, a couple oh, of house shows for us to go and see. Yes, it's all going to be good. Very busy, 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 busy. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, just, just, to, just to go back on that point very quickly... Uh, the V is a five, Weeds, right? Yes, I know. But what's a four? Yeah, but the V, the V shouldn't be in there, then, should it? What's a four? 
the 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 one before the V, but that's not the point. If the if the V is a five weeds, then it yeah. should not matter where you put ones. So what's a four? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. No wonder they switch from bloody Roman numerals to WrestleMania. Got you watching WrestleMania 4 about five <laughs> times. <laughs> Crikey, i got to go check all my videos now. I've probably cocked that up a lot. Um, yeah, it's going to be really good. Uh, tr- uh, trick or treat uh, 4 uh, at, um, at Car Shorten. I'm uh, looking forward to it. We're going to get to see Daniels, who obviously made us Daniels approved, get even more Daniels approved. Hopefully get Frankie Kazarian approved as well. Looking forward to that. Meeting think, those guys together is going to be awesome. I think they're far more likely to bar us from the place when they find out you're stalking Daniels. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. It's going to be awesome. Looking forward to it. Hock or Holly would be very interesting. I ain't seen him in yonks. Uh, and Chavo Guerrero, always a good performance. And Chris Masters. Um, the masterpiece. Yeah, he's maybe half the masterpiece these days. He's, he's, not, as, he's, not, he's not that big guy. Anymore. The drugs don't work. They just make things worse now. Oh, wait. How, how dare you? How dare you imply that? Slander. Um, anyway, anyway, yeah, we are going to that show. So we'll let you know. We'll probably cover that on, uh, uh, you know, next week's We Talk. And obviously, we've got WWE as well. Woohoo! Busy um, time. Indeed. Uh, my shout out. My shout out. Found, you found it. it. Nice feeling. Nice feeling there, Weeds. Um, this one is for Skinnybone16. That's your Twitter name, Ryan. Uh, and you want it to be Bagwell approved. Uh, people still want to be Bagwell approved. It's still there. I'm still waiting for Buff Bagwell to come back to me. And, they uh, obviously don't know the abuse he subjects us to on a weekly basis. And, and the lasting damage he is, he is having to both of our psyches. Yes, I'm still I'm still waiting for uh, I, many of you probably don't know it. I've I've been I have been reaching out to uh, uh Buff. Excuse me? No, <laughs> fuck <laughs> off. I knew it was gonna get that. Uh, I've been uh trying to get reaching in contact. round or no, none of that. No. Okay, P- just P- check. PG show, PG show. Uh yeah, I have been uh trying to get in contact with one <laughs> Buff Bagwell. I mean I mean we get in regular contact with him, but he's disappeared. So um <laughs> Uh, and trying to get us officially, uh, I mean, I mean, seriously, officially from the man himself. And um, I have had quite a lot of progress, but it's still not done yet. So I will keep trying. Uh, I, I, I think we go to war. If you ever if you ever fancy dropping Mr. Bagwell a tweet, you know, just say, you know, come on, you know, let Delzinski be officially Bagwell approved. You're more than welcome. To um, pester him? No, not pester him. Just you know, little nudge here. Um, I mean, he's he's watched. He did watch my Canadian Destroyer video, and he did say it was uh, was awesome. I think it was. So he knows. He knows. But are we asking too much? He's a very busy man. So I mean, yeah, I think he's actually over here in the UK at the moment doing something at Earl's Court. So it was something that we talked about a while back. But uh, oh, yeah. obviously, we're going we're going to the uh, the FPW <laughs> show instead. We're 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 not going to that um, extravaganza that he's uh, currently holding are we no but uh hopefully hopefully we still will get bagwell approved that is the dream anyway 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 skinny bone 16 ryan you are officially bagwell approved uh we're officially bagwell approved we always have been always will so uh whether yeah. he likes it or not <laughs> yeah we're just gonna roll with it um yeah, so that brings us again to an end of another We Talk. Uh, it's been a very good one. Like I say, loads of shizzle covered in this one. And uh, yeah, let us know in the comments box below your views on all those topics today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the new screenshots as well of the My Career Mode. That's an exclusive. I got them today from 2K. So um, yeah, I hope you guys like that as well. Let me know what you think of Corey Graves, uh, the new one of Adrian Neville. Yeah. Just loads of good stuff going on today, Weeds. Got anything else to add before we uh, s- 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 sign out? No, just that um, I'll obviously be going over with Delzinski next week why Lesnar turned up to the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. That's so wishful thinking, it's untrue. <laughs> anyway, guys. Always... Might happen. No. How yeah. much you got paying to turn up? Well, a couple of mil. <laughs> It'll be interesting. We will be covering that. Um, yeah, we do you want to you say your little goodbye? Until next week, guys. Enjoy Helen the Cell, and we will catch you next week. Yes, we will. This is Delzinski and Weeds, always Bagwell approved and Daniels approved. Sign in out. <laughs>